Assalamu alaikum and a very good day ladies and gentlemen we will continue on this part we are going to focus more on to the kinetic molecular theory of the gases please remember in order to have a basic idea about this subtopic 4.4 the subtopic you should well understood all the basic uh, i would say the basic gas law that we have learned at the earlier subtopic which is we have covered it from 4.1 until 4.3 so this will explain a bit detail the combination of the gas law that we have learned earlier uh, in the previous video boys law charles law and also our gado law and also in this particular uh, subtopic you're going to learn about the assumption that has been made especially for the kinetic molecular theory which is the main focus of this chapter somehow at the toward to the end of the this subtopic we going to interrelate remember when we are going to talk about kinetic it is referred to the movement of the molecule itself somehow the movement of the molecule very much interrelated with the few factors that is included at the temperature of the molecules and also the molecular mass of the particular substance that we are going to look and we are going to interlink with the uh, speed of the molecule by using the maxwell boltzmann distribution curve so those are the learning outcome that we actually expect the student to understand at the end of this subtopic without further ado let's go into the chapter itself so before we go in detail about this chapter there are certain uh, molecular theory of the uh, this one is still on its 4.4 we are going to look at the kinetic molecular theory of the gases which is we're going to focus on a few postulate that been made for this particular theory remember the there are actually five but all of these are interrelated one another so the first one going to be the postulate the first point that you need to know the particles volume is negligible relative to the size of the container this is a first assumption we need to take in the mind because the volume of the particle are very relatively small and we can assume it is close to zero mass and also postulate number 2 will be the molecule move randomly in a straight line in all direction and at the various speed yes those molecule have a uh, we will assume it is moving in a linear pattern a straight line in all directions and the various speed Rem again guys you must understood the speed of the molecule over here very much affected by the external factor as well and the third thing that you need to be uh, be careful will be the intermolecular forces is negligible because the attraction force in especially in the uh, this kind of the, between the molecule are extremely small and doesn't cause a very uh, high, uh, significant differences but remember those are the postulate that we make for kinetic molecular theory and number 4 when the molecule we will also assume the molecule when it uh, collide each other it will the collisions are elastic remember what do uh, we mean by elastic after the collision between two particular molecule between let's say we have a molecule a and b when they are collide each other they are going to separate as a end of the result this is uh, they are not going to stick between one another that is a uh, one of the postulate that we made and the last one that need to remember the average kinetic energy of the molecule is proportional please take note it is always proportional with the absolute temperature yes it is a very basic chemistry that we have learned the higher the kinetic energy this one 
uh, the uh, kinetic energy is somehow related with the temperature. So we can interrelate between the temperature and also the, uh, the movement of the, pa uh, the particles or the kinetic energy. So it is always directly proportional. So let's look the next particular part. So in uh, we will make it as simple, uh, refer as a KMT is actually referred to the uh, kinetic molecular theory for the gas laws. Okay, so on this particular chapter, we have learned, we have go through uh, that's about the Boyce law. It is mentioned clearly in fact you have those uh, you have learned this boys law in your previous study especially during your spm so what is so special about the boys law it is always remember it somehow related with the pressure and we make an uh, that rules it mentions the pressure is directly proportional with the collusion rate with the wall of the gas container yes uh, how can this possible? Let's look at this particular diagram to make it much clearer. Imagine uh, you have this closed container. This is an cl uh, a closed container. So you apply a pressure into the system. When you apply the uh, pressure into the system, the, I will say the pistons or the, the top of this particular cover will move downward. When it moves downward, you are actually, we are actually squeezing down the molecules between one another. When the molecules are squeezed down, this will limit the space between the molecule. Eventually, at the higher pressure, it causes the uh, lower volume. It's the cause the lower volume because you squeeze down the uh, pistons, become uh, half of the volume maybe. So this eventually cause more collusion. Why this collision must happen? This collision actually, the collision between the molecule particle in the container, uh, it will continuously mobile or move around and it will collide with the container in order to make the uh, external pressure and internal pressure become equivalent. It means the pressure inside the container and the pressure that been applied on the container. So we can conclude at the based on this particular diagram, we back to this uh, simple relationships. I can say the collision rate, collision rate, as I told you, is depends on the number of density. Remember when we are referring to the density, it means how many particles is actually packed together in particular space that is what we call the density so the the, the density is uh, proportional the number of the density directly proportional with the one over volume this end up with the equation of a p that uh, is proportional with the one over v the volume of the container itself so, of course, we can move to the next particular uh, law that mentioned about the Charles Law. It also mentioned about it's something interrelated with the pressure, again, with the collision rate with the walls of the gas container. You're going to have the same thing. But the collision rate, uh, this one, uh, for this second point, you notice, is proportional. Uh, directly proportional with the average kinetic energy of the gas molecule. So, at this, uh, this one, at the first, uh, I will, let's do a simple comparison. For the first one, the boys law mentioned the proportional, the collusion is proportional with the number of density. But under the Charles law, it mentioned Again, the same thing, the child, uh, the collision uh, rate, it interrelated or it is equivalent to the uh, directly proportional with the average kinetic energy. So we can make an assumption. Again, average kinetic energy is directly proportional with the temperature. This is how it comes with the Charles uh, law.
Okay. Of course, when you have a high, uh, when you squeeze it out and it, uh, in, you increase the temperature, somehow it is interrelated. Okay. Let's look at uh, a diagram to make it more clear with the a next particular law, which is the Avogadro law. In this one, again, guys, if you look, we are going to talk almost a similar stuff, which is you are talking about the pressure. And of course, you are talking about the collision rate again. Of course, the collision rate of the molecules on a particular walls or gas container. The again, but, but now we are going to have a look. The collision rate is directly proportional with the number of density so we can actually um, make a conclusion the uh, earlier laws the balls and charles and also our gardo our gardo laws are interrelated one and other and they are talking about the collisions and the number of molecules in particular container so in this uh, this one we can make a simplified equation again a pressure will equivalent uh, directly proportional with the number of density so i hope at this particular moment the student do understand what is the each particular law is actually trying to uh, make a conclusion try to come out and also you know the differences between each of these uh, uh, gas law that have been mentioned so nothing much it's just uh, represent the same stuff over here so we then followed by we do have a Dalton law and this Dalton law of a partial pressure so in this particular Dalton's law, it mentioned the molecule do not attract or repel one another. So they are at, uh, actually they are not attracted to one another. This will cause the pressure uh, ex exerted by one type of the molecule is unaffected by the presence of another gas. It's mean, I'm sure after this, when we go through more example, this is just a theory. Well, I'm sure once we have go through the, theo uh, the theory and examples, you will get a better picture of this combination of the law. So we can say that it can be concluded at the pressure of this one is equivalent to the sum of the individual uh, molecule in that particular container as well. Okay, so by using this particular idea, let's move on to this one, a molecular speed. This is a 4.4.3 molecular speed. In, at this particular subtopic, uh, sub it is mentioned that the all gas molecule in a sample can travel at the different speed. Yes, this one, please keep in mind, very much depends on the energy itself the kinetic energy of the molecule itself so the the distribution of the speed follows a statistical pattern the average velocity this pattern this um, uh, pattern of the movement of the molecule is what we call as the average velocity of the molecule of course guy it is um and I'm very, I'm sure you just need to know the basic, the basic of this particular uh, concept, not really in detail. So it can be calculated by using this particular terms, the root mean square method. So you can calculate the average velocity. This is what we are going to look in detail. Remember, average velocity do have this symbol. So, and it is noted that this average velocity is equal, equal to the speed of the molecule having the average molecular kinetic energy. So, this is the speed, uh, the average velocity. So, it can be calculated. Yes, we can calculate the average velocity of a particular molecule. This is quite interesting thing as well. 
so it is a square root of course 3 is, a, uh, is just a number and the rt the r is referred to the constant it normally given during the examination and the t is the temperature in a unit of kelvin and of course we do have the molar mass the molar mass uh, is the molar mass of in the unit of kilogram over mole please guys take note those unit because normally during the examination students tend to make a callous mistake especially they uh, does the, do not doesn't change the unit maybe the question given in the uh, maybe in a degree celsius the student doesn't change it to the kelvin it might be somehow will cause a error in the calculation please be aware with this particular calculation so let's look this is a very interesting uh, say a calculation calculate the root mean square speeds of helium atom wow we are calculating a specifically the speed of an uh, say helium atoms and nitrogen molecules in a uh, in meter per second at 25 degrees celsius if you look at this particular question there are certain things be aware be the take note especially they say helium atom because it is a, a monoatomic and nitrogen molecules why they refer as a nitrogen molecule this indicate is a n2 so it is a nitrogen gas and they do give some additional information such as a temperature we do agree in the first place temperature play a significance rules in the movement of a, a molecule or the kinetic energy so they combine all those stuff in these particular questions so somehow i still feel this is a very straightforward questions you have this thing you calculate you just use the formula that mentioned earlier substitute the param parameters and you can calculate the final answer be careful the temperature in kelvin and the molar mass it can, it is earlier it is uh, molar uh, molar mass of this helium is a 4 gram over mole then they change the unit to kilogram then substitute guys if you careless of this particular two particular point trust me it will cause a uh, different answer you're gonna do or repeat the same thing you have done with the helium you're gonna repeat with the nitrogen molecule or nitrogen gas just substitute and the parameter and you find out this will be your n uh, of uh, or i can say it as a root mean square speed for this helium as well of as the nitrogen gas so of course without further ado i would like to move on to the uh, next subtopic which is a 4.4.3 molecular speed again we are going to interrelate the one that we have learned earlier with the maxwell speed distribution curve as the absolute temperature increase this is a very 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 important uh, point remember the absolute temperature increases we know we are we have discussed this in an earlier point the average velocity increases as well therefore the distribution function the spread out resulting in more molecule with the faster speed let's look at this a diagram i make uh, i will explain to you how should we read this particular Maxwell uh, speed distribution curve? By looking at this uh, particular curve, we have a three line. We have like a 100 Kelvin, 300 Kelvin and 700 Kelvin. So it is well understood 700 Kelvin have a, I would say, higher temperature as compared to the other uh, two uh, line that mentioned over here 100 and uh, 300 so imagine imagine guys the area the area under the this particular let's say i'm 
fixed at this one point. Eh? I take this one. At this particular point, the area under the curve actually indicate the total molecule. So, it is well understood for 300 Kelvin, and this is your cut-off point. This is the area under the curve, and this is the total molecule that involve have the uh, speed of the reactions. Imagine, imagine when you are talking at a 700 uh, Kelvin, of course, the temperature increases, higher temperature, automatically, we should have average velocity also increases. This causes more molecule, faster speed. So, in this particular 700 Kelvin, again, guys, you just need to look at the area under the curve. So, the area under the curve not only cover on the top, it also cover the area for this particular 300 Kelvin. So, it have a bigger region as compared to 300 Kelvin. This agree with the one mentioned in the second point. It cause it resulting higher average, uh, uh, high, this one, uh, average velocity increase cause more molecule more molecule with a faster speed so remember this is read through based on the uh, the area under the curve a similar things can be done through the of course for this uh, diagram but what is this different with the earlier this is talking specifically only for a nitrogen nevertheless on this particular uh, graph, the second graph, we are talking it at one specific temperature for different molecule and atom or, or atoms. So you notice what will be the difference? The molecule, the molar mass, the atomic mass as well. So I can say that a bigger molecule, we will make an assumption, it will have a so slower movement because it's quite bulky in the size. And smaller molecule at the fixed temperature, sorry, a smaller atom, uh, the helium is an atom, so at the 300 degrees Celsius, a fixed temperature, a smaller size, therefore it going to have a higher uh, average velocity. Again, guys, look at the region area under the curve for each of these particular uh, compound that given so you can have a next one you can discuss about the checkpoint with your lecturer in during the class hours so this will be the first part of the uh, my i said the video i will continue with the second part thank you